Daniel chapter 6, verse 9. Wherefore, King Dyer signed the writing decree. He didn't pray. He didn't ask, where's Daniel? He made a snap decision. He put his confidence in man. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, it was public notice, he went into his house. He didn't go on the street corner. He didn't run to the courthouse. He didn't run to the lawyers. And his windows being opened in his chamber, in his room, toward Jerusalem. Now, 1 Kings... We're going to do scripture with scripture. We're in no rush. 8, 1 Kings 8. And what we're going to see here is Daniel is no fool. Daniel knows the scriptures. Because look at 1 Kings. This is not the law. This is Solomon's prayer at the dedication of the temple that God, if you read later, held to a regard and answered Solomon, yes. To your petitions, I say yes. And to verse 30, and hearken unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people, Israel. When they shall pray towards this place, this is what Daniel's doing. And hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, heaven, when thou hearest, forgive. Daniel is doing, you can't find this in the law. Daniel is doing, back to the book of Daniel, exactly what Solomon prayed. He's got his chamber towards Jerusalem. He's got his windows open. And Solomon said, Lord, if you will hear your people, Israel, pray. No public show. He's not protesting. He's not getting camels and closing off the streets. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. And gave thanks. Not only did Daniel ask a petition, not only did God, Daniel pray, but he gave thanks. His family's been killed, and anything left of his family has been made captives in Babylon. He's unable to have any children. His three friends were thrown into the fire. He has been put in a spot by the people. The, the, the place he's praying to, Jerusalem, and the temple have been destroyed, burned, and, and desecrated by the heathen. He's been almost forced to become a non-Jew, but Babylonian. And he's praying to God, and he gave thanks. Gasoline is getting expensive. Well, thank God you still got gasoline. But you ain't using it for the Lord. Most of your gasoline don't go for the Lord. We got people right here in Daytona Beach right now. They're driving around their motorcycles, driving around their motorcycles. They're saying that these truckers are circling Maryland and, and uh, Washington, D.C. in protest. Well, don't cry, baby, to me about gas prices. If you're going to waste prices like that. How many laps did NASCAR make today on a Sunday afternoon? And how many times did people needlessly go somewhere in their vehicle and, and wasted gas? No honor and glory to God himself. He gave thanks. That's important. Because if you look at the life of Daniel, what is it? he's not home and he can't go home. And he gave thanks and he prayed. And Christians, they talk about, they go to the store and they got books of prayer, books of prayer, books of prayer. I've seen the bookstore. I've seen all the books of prayer. But very rarely, if not at all, you say, how to pray. Closer to God with prayer. But very rarely in that title do I see prayer and thanks. You see, we are a Christian nation. <laughs> I say that with a long nose. 
And we got a time for Estar, Easter. We got a Tammuz time for Christmas. We got an MLK Day. We got Dead Presidents Day. We honor dead vet veterans. And we got Halloween. And we got all kinds of festive pagan holidays. But we have one day we're supposed to give thanks to God and Jesus Christ. A proclamation by George Washington. And even that in 2022, that's, come on, hurry up, come on, hurry up, because i got to go to sleep now so I can go Black Friday. Come on, you want to get the dinner out there because the Cowboys are playing. <laughs> and I wonder how many family outings last Thanksgiving 2021 in a Christian house saved with their family around. All right, before we eat, we're going to say a blessing to Jesus. Ah! You came in witness to that family about Jesus. You're not going to thank God before him. Daniel prayed, gave thanks. That's not it. Three times a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Before his God. He didn't pray to Allah. He didn't pray to... Um, prayer wheel. He didn't pray to Mary. Well, Mary, yeah, there was a Mary long before Mary. Her name was Astrid. She's found in the Bible. Watch this. As he did aforetime. Daniel always prayed three days, three times a day. Daniel always prayed. Daniel always gave thanks. This is not something, all right, the government says I can't do it. Now I'm going to do it. You see, you know what's going to happen? If American government says you can't have a Bible, you know how many Christians are going to pick up a Bible and start proclaiming? Oh. I think there should be a test for that. What's that? All right. Also, now, if, if the Bible became illegal in America, I'm going to buy it. All right, find me Nahum. Find Habakkuk. Oh, no, I don't do that. I don't, I don't have no tobacco or... or or booze. I didn't say tobacco. I said tobacco. All right. You see a lot of people jump on the bandwagon. Daniel didn't jump on the bandwagon. He had that wagon his whole entire life. Daniel could not get where he could got today without prayer and giving things to God. The king came and said, listen, Answer and interpret my dream. He got together with Shadrach, Jemach, and Indigo together before Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. By the way, you didn't know Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. Do you realize before Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. Do you know that two or three are gathered together in that furnace and Jesus was right there with them? Before Jesus was born as a man, still God. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo had a prayer life. They had a thanksgiving God life. You can see it through the book of Daniel, 12 chapters. There are some today, you know, if you couldn't pray, you that wouldn't bother them at all. There are people today, oh, you know, the churches are closed with COVID-19. Oh, oh, well, no big deal. Look at the Internet. Well, what if God turned off the Internet? What if the next G, I don't know what those Gs are, but what if that next G, they said they said there were people who had, who had phones and they, they went to the next G and their phones are obsolete. They can't use them no more. What if they go up to the next G and you can't have internet and you can't have whatever you want religion on YouTube or anything? Then these men assembled. These are the two presidents and the princes and all the People against you got the majority against the man of God. Listen, if you are a true Bible Christian, you even got other Christians after you. Because not only you are kicking the unsaved shins, you're kicking the saved people's shins. I know that I know he's right. I know that's what I'm about. I, I want to be comfortable, and that Christian is not making me feel comfortable. These men. Daniel's not making him comfortable because Daniel's got to a position in the government that even the king's like, hey, I'm going to put this guy as extreme leader of this nation. He is reliable. He's faithful. He's true. And it makes them look bad. 
So he then assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. I always drew the picture of, you know, Daniel's at that window and they're on the other side, outside the window, just waiting. Checking their sundial. Yeah, he's going to be any minute now, he's going to do it. And they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree, the law. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any capital G God? Now, do you think in the originals which is, that they had a capital G there? I doubt it. I think the Holy Spirit put the capital God, I'm going to give you the credit. I wonder what the other modern Bibles do. Because the God of Daniel, because look at verse 10, and gave thanks before his God. Verse 11, made supplication to his God. Do you think they were going to turn anyone in who were praying to Ishtar? Or Baal? Or the other countless gods and goddesses. They would have done that. They were after one man, Daniel. So that one man, Daniel, capital G, God, his God, the prayer to his God. That's not a mistake. That's something you find only in the King James. For within 30 days. Save thee, O king. All right. Everyone can't pray. Everybody can't ask a petition, but you can. So picture these guys, they go into their, I don't know if they had restaurants, they go into restaurants, waitress comes up, gives them water, whatever. And I don't know if they had menus, but, okay, and the waitress says, what, what, shall you, what shall you want? What do you want? Oh, I'll have the camel burgers. Ah, you're guilty. What? No camel burgers? No, 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 no. You just asked a petition of a man. What's it say? Every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man. What if, King, yeah. I, I got a letter. It's bad news. My dad is dying. Uh, can I take a trip and go see him before? Oh, you just asked a petition. You broke the law. You, you go into the, the convenience store back then, and whatever they had it, and you say, you know, I, I got these ruples, whatever they had. Can I have change for the ruples or or uh, shekels, whatever they had? Oh, you just asked a petition. You broke the law. Come on, I, I don't. It doesn't say how many days that they went and caught Daniel. I, I'm going to assume that day or the next day. I'm, I, I'm assuming. But you're trying to tell me that it was back in verse 1. 122 men. I'm going to assume they all were there. That 122 men, if not, let's say half, did not and have not made at least a petition before God, before God, their God, or anybody. I mean, not one of those men went home that night to their wives and honey. <laughs> you mean they're, they're, they, were, they were sitting down in the living room reading the Babylonian Times or watching the Babylonian Cable News Network, whatever, and their son didn't come. Dad, can I have, can, I, can you help me with this math? Or his daughter said, Dad, I got to write, write a report. Uh, how do you spell? That's a petition. Do you, do you see what? They would be in a violation of their own law. Except for the king. And you realize when you're looking at the realm of religion, religion violates their own law. The Catholic is supposed to be meek and humble spirit, and yet the Catholics in church history has been anything but meek and humble when it came to the Bible belief. So 
So I want you to see that any God or any man for 30 days, you can't ask for nothing. O king shall be cast in the den of lions. Capital punishment. I'm glad Jesus Christ didn't go to this because this this is this is the gospel chapter. I'm I'm, I'm I thank God Jesus Christ didn't go to the dead in line for my sin. Can you imagine what the Catholics would wear around their necks and their idol between their breasts of you know a lion or a cave of lions? The king answered and said, Now he hasn't got a clue. The thing is true. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters now. Man, you just sank your... You, you spent too much, King. You should say it's true. Because what you're going to want to do, you just say with your own big fat mouth, which you couldn't do anyway. But, you know, you were rash. You, and the lesson, one of the lessons of Daniel chapter 6 is, don't be rash. We get that warning throughout, throughout, throughout the wisest man in the book of Proverbs. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which of the children of the captivity of Judah. You ever notice throughout the Bible, they are so quick to put the Jew, that Jew, that Hebrew, ne uh, not ne uh, uh, oh. Haman. Well, there's a group of people, the Jews. In the tribulation period, there's going to be a group of those Jews. You know why they finally turned Jesus over to, to be crucified? Because of the Jews. The whole entire city was on an uproar because of that one man. Regardeth not thee, O king. Nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make his petition three times a day. Ah, oh, they knew Daniel. Oh, wait a minute. Come back over here. Look at verse 10. Being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to God, his God. And they, knew that Daniel prayed three times a day. Now, if he's in his own room, how did they know that? Verse 13, his petition three times a day. If you are a Christian, You may think you're fooling your neighbors, your family, church. They know. They know where you ought to be unless something's wrong. Now, we were not in church this morning because of uh, isolation. We came positive for a test of COVID and... and the law is, or whatever the rules are, you know, it's five days of uh, isolate, quarantine yourself if you don't have any signs or symptoms. The world knows what you're supposed to be doing if you're a Christian. These men wanted to find something wrong with Daniel, and they said, we couldn't find nothing. He's faithful, and he tried. That would be the law of his God. So they would have to go and study the scriptures to find what Daniel could and what Daniel could not do that we could nail. You know that there is somebody that knows the Bible more than any scholar or any Christian. And when he shows up in the Bible, he says, yea, has God said, or, and he starts quoting the scriptures. Satan quoted the scriptures to Jesus. Satan 
Satan knew Daniel was supposed to pray. Supposed to have his window open towards you. He knew that. Have you ever looked at the world and said, how come that looks so much like the Bible? How come that's spoken about in the Bible? How come those lyrics match the Bible? And they don't know anything about the Bible. They don't have any care for the Bible. They don't care about God. They don't know Jesus. But it's so interesting. It matches the Bible because Satan knows the Bible. The eagles rode ahead. Turn, turn, turn. And said when they, the, the man who wrote that happened to open the book of Ecclesiastes and said there's a time and a season, there's a time, and, and he wrote the lyrics. Satan knows what you're supposed to be doing. And Satan wants to get you. He knows exactly what you do and how you do it. Listen. If Satan wants to get me, and he gets me. Believe me. There are things that he uses, and at the time he uses it, he, he tries to get me. And I fail sometimes. Satan is not ever going to use alcohol for me. He, he, I, I, he can put all the alcohol in front of me. I'm not going to drink it. I don't care. Especially if you put a, a, a beer bottle, beer can in front of me, a beer keg. I'm going to sniff that stuff, and that stuff smells like piss to me. That's a Bible word, piss. In case you didn't know. Now there are other things that Satan knows. He knows me. He knows my sin. And he'll put those things in front of me. Uh -huh, I got him. And he knows there are things that, uh, that, that won't work. And like Daniel. How about get his prayer life? Now let me ask you something Christian. Let me ask myself too. If Satan wanted to entrap you. Could he use what they use on Daniel? We're not. You can't pray. As a Christian, oh, that don't bother me. That won't get me. How about if they came up and said, "All right, the King James Bible is outlawed in America." I know Christians. I know Pat. That don't bother me. I got I got the NIV. I got I got the I got the I got the C E V. I got the Q B S. I got the New King James. I got the R S V. I got the. That won't bother me. Now, if that could be good, we get rid of that King James Bible. I got a pastor made a comment about it. Well, he would he wouldn't care. I would. They bust down my door and well, what's that Bible you're reading? Behind closed doors, no one else can see. What's that Bible read? Right here, it says King James. By the way, how'd you know what time of the day I read my Bible? You better not shout. You better not pout. I'm telling you why Satan is coming. That's Santa Claus. Rearrange the letters, Satan. He knows when you are reading. He knows when you are praying. And he is very upset because you're doing it to God. Daniel was faithful to God and Satan knew it. And Satan said, get him in his prayer life. Get him reading the King James Bible. How about Satan doing this? Hey, why don't you get him in his music? For 30 days in America, the traditional hymns are out. But contemporary, contemporary Christian music is okay. There is power, power, wonder working. Uh, how do you know I was playing that? Now I'm arrested. Here's another question. If you are a Christian, and we're talking about Daniel here, if you are a Christian and they haul you off before a judge, and the prosecuting attorney is over there hired by the state. Could that prosecuting attorney get enough evidence to convict you as a Christian? Or would they have to throw the case out of court because we ain't got enough evidence? Could the prosecuting attorney bring you your co-worker? Oh yeah, that guy, he reads his Bible, he prays. 
doesn't cuss, good attitude, respectful. Call your fan. That guy mentions hell. The guy told me I was going to hell. I could believe on Jesus not go to hell. Where would you, and, and there's a hey, dare to be Daniel. Hey, a lot of Christians, they'll sing that hymn, but they don't be dare to be Daniel. How about your attitude as a Christian? What about this? What if they say, all right, guns are completely outlaw? You'd be up in a tinsel. You'd be up in a frenzy. You wouldn't care about the Bible. Oh, you don't, can't take my gun. I got freedom. I got, a, I got a proposition for you right now, you Americans. Here's the American flag over here, stars and stripes, red, white, and blue. Here's a Bible over here, any Bible you want, but for me, be King James. One of them has to burn and be thrown into the garbage can. I will be reading the King James Bible later on that day, the next day, the next day, and the next day. <gasps> Bless me, he's going to burn the American flag over the word of God. You better believe I would. I, I, I believe idolatry is the American flag. I don't care how you feel. All right, so... They knew about Daniel. How did they know about Daniel? They were either watching him or Satan was watching him. You better believe if you are living right and trying, listen, I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. I need the blood of Jesus Christ. I need to confess my sin. But you are you the type of Christian that you get up in the morning and the devil's in hell like, oh, snooze. Snooze. Are you the type of Christian you get up in the morning and the devil's like, get up? Because that man's going out and he's got tracks and he'll use them. You know, I have seen the devil in, in is it Mark chapter 4 where the sower puts the seed out and the very first thing I've seen the de devil take that seed away. I've seen it. Maybe not the devil himself, but his devil's. The devil said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. We're going to read later on Daniel. They're going to say, Daniel, thou highly favored. Mary was said to be highly favored. I hope I'm well done. If I get a well done, I, I'm satisfied. Hopefully more. But I'm assured today that they can use my videos and, hey, he's a Christian. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore to please with himself. Oh, you realize now? You, you see what the problem is? Oh, Christmas is coming. Here's my credit card. Here's my MasterCard. Here's my Visa. Go, go buy gifts for everybody. And January, the mail comes in. Oh, Oh, Lord God, help me with the money. Yeah, you should have stopped worshiping Tammuz. Well, our church gave presents to Jesus. I didn't get them. What was I going to do with a roll of toilet paper? We don't need that in heaven. Well, the pastor said we gave toilet paper a copy pair, paper or, or a cleanser. What in heaven needs cleanser? You may have put the gift tag to Jesus from you. I didn't get that. My church is not walls, glass, or toilet paper. It's souls. And you have not tried to win a soul in your whole entire life, but you can give me toilet paper. That's a bunch of crap. Fire put up. The king has realized... Without debating, without questioning, without seeking, without counsel, I have done something very 
stupid. And let me tell you, I have been in the shoes of this king <coughs> many times in my life. I've done something at that moment. Hey, it seems right, it seems right. There's no consequences. And then later on, bam. Ah. Oh, that's going to hurt. It's going to hurt more now than I know than it. <laughs> and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. Which shows us, and by the time we close tonight, the laws of the Medes and Persians, there is no loophole. Now, if America does not stand firm, it's not going to. You know, you realize if another country comes in, China, Russia, whoever, you realize the first thing America is going to be upset? They're not going to change your policy because you're American. They're not going to give in because you're black. They're not going to settle because you don't know what sex you are. They will kill you because you're a sodomite. Just because America's relaxed doesn't mean all the world is relaxed. It's sorry that sodomy is a sin amongst and a crime amongst the Muslim nation. But not the Christian nation, God we trust in America. That's sorry. And America is going to pray upon God for help when they've turned against God, when God will bring in his judgments upon America. You're a Christian nation, in God we trust, you killed babies, you allow children to know what not what sex they are, you allow sodomites to roll in the land, you you, you, gay, and you call it evil good and good. Yeah. The king is now... Oh, what did I do? What did I do? He set his heart onto... Now, you see how, how important Daniel and how much he cared about Daniel? He put all his heart into it. He knows what the law is. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver. What labor did he do? You asked yourself? Now, you can take that word in two ways. I'm going to give you both ways. I believe the latter. Labor is you go do work. You know, you, you put a roof on a house, you mow someone's lawn, you paint someone's lawn, you wash their car, uh, you empty their car. You know, that's labor. How about this one? The King James words. How about labor as a woman that goes into labor to give birth with agony and pain and, oh, travail. What if that king has put himself to pain and travail and anguish and uh, What about You see how faithful Daniel is? The mighty king is doing all he can plus and now he realizes what these jerks are. Now you realize what these jerks... Alright. Daniel was well favored by the king. Alright, we're going to put him in the lion's den. He's going to eat by lions and he's going to be dead. We don't need to worry about Daniel no more, right? Didn't they ever think about what the king's going to do after all this was done? <laughs> oh yeah, like he's really going to trust you anymore. You put this man on the rack. At this point right now, you know who the king is angry with? He's not angry with Daniel. Where do you think these princes and presidents are in their standing in this kingdom? They better pack up and leave town. Even Daniel goes in the lion's den and dies. They better get out of judge. You see what the devil will do? Go ahead and do it. Do it. But there's no consequences. I'm not going to tell you about the consequences. You see, you have liberty to turn Daniel over to the king. There's a statue of liberty. 
Maybe you mean you're tired. And you get better put that arm down because, you know, her armpits are starting to stink. But there's no statue of consequence. And we got liberty. He also got consequence. I can sleep with any women I want. And the consequence is you get a disease and you get children you never plan on. Oh, with the children, you just go to the clinic and they'll cut the child out or abort the child. Oh, with disease, they'll just go to the doctor and, and, and then the government will pay for your medication. Not under this government, it ain't going to happen. And not under, under the government and the judgment of God. You're not going to be staying at the great white throne judgment with a lawyer. Now, at the judgment seat of Christ, I'll have a lawyer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Under the blood. They have now angered the king. Then these men assembled under the king. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's labored. Then these men assembled under the king and said, King, where did they go? It says, verse 11. These men assembled. So there you are in front of the king. They explained to the king the law, that his writing, and here is Daniel. And he's laboring, and he's working. He's got his heart. Daniel's not there. And to the delivering of the coming down, the sunset. And the sunset happened, and they assembled themselves to the king. What on earth happened? To these men and this king laboring for Daniel. I'm a Christian. I worked for a place. They knew I was a Christian. They didn't like I was a Christian. They knew I was faithful. But they didn't like I was faithful. I've got permission. I was in school to study my when, when I when no one was in my office, and somebody was in my office, I was to put the books away and do my best. And it was completely agreeable. And somebody turned me in. And this is what the thing is. I had countless times that my boss stepped up to his boss. I gave him permission, or he asked me, or he's faithful. Ooh, they hated that even more. Then these men assembled unto the king. I'm, I'm assuming they left. Something was going on in, with that king that he's labored. Doing works before his God. He's got his heart set on Daniel and he's laboring for Daniel. So the sun goes down. And in this time and age, and it's even recorded in the Bible, when the sun went down, that was the end of the work day. Scripture with Scripture. Don't mess with the King James, because you mess with the King James, you can't get the cross-reference. When the men agreed to their penny a day, and they're out there working the fields an hour before the, 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 the shift is over, there's two people in there they're still getting their penny a day when the sun came down, they went and got their wages. Then these men assembled unto the king. Did they leave the king? And said unto the king, No, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians, Look at the end of verse 12. And the king answered, This thing is true according to the law of Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Well, they're not going to say that statement after five minutes after the king just said it. There had to be, King, we're going to refresh your memory. You know what this is going to do more? This is going to get the king even more mad. That no decree or statute which the king established may be changed. No loopholes. No amendments. Boy, that would shoot people down with the Constitution. You can't change it. Then the king commanded. 
And they brought Daniel and cast him into a den of lions. All right, the king is true to his word. The king has to do what he has to do. He's tried everything else. Come down to it. He can't change the law. Well, now he's got to be faithful. Because if he doesn't be faithful, then every criminal can run a remark. Now, we talked about this last night. Daniel is a man of God. He broke the law, but he didn't break God's law. Peter and John the Apostles broke man's law, but they didn't break God's law, and they were beaten for it. Sometimes, breaking man's law, but not breaking God's law, you're going to suffer. Daniel did not break God's law, but he broke the law of the king, and God did not stop him going into the den of lions. God's law said you're not to bow down before any image. The government said you bow down before my golden image. Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo disobeyed the law of man, broke their law, but did not disobey the law of God. And they still went into the furnace and God didn't stop. And if you pick up Fox's Book of Mars or any Christian martyrs book, they will tell them the government said this, God said this. They took God's side and they went to the faggots. They burned. They went to the, the, the they were put in knapsack and thrown into the river. They were all kinds of torture. And God did not stop it. And the Christians today, oh, God's going to stop the gasoline crisis. He didn't stop his son from dying on the cross and suffering. This is the cross that Jesus said we must take up. It's so simple to be a child of a Jew. Just be of the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now to be a child of God, to be a man of God, now it takes... Anybody can be a Christian. But Jesus said the disciple is disciplined. Whether his mother, his father, his sister, his daughter, his, even his own wife or children... You got to take that cross and they won't help you, won't guide you. And yeah, goodbye. See you later. I'm going on. You want to get on the bag? Get on the bag. You stay with me. But if you fall off, I ain't going off after you. I'm going to keep on going. You're going to have to run and catch up. And cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spanked and said to Daniel, Thy God, not his God. Get that. Who now serves continually. Now, look at that. Daniel, we've been told, has the excellent spirit, the Holy Spirit. Daniel is faithful. Daniel holds true to prayer. Daniel serves God. Continually, like he prayed continually and gave thanks to God continually. The Christian, no, the, the character, that's what, not Christian. The character of Daniel is, I'm going to serve the Lord. And he will deliver thee. Now look at the faith of the king. And he says, thy God. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And it says he was cast. We're going to assume it's some kind of pit. He was thrown into it. King sticks his head down in there. Thy God, whom thou servest continue, he will deliver thee. And they brought the stone and put it on the mouth. Do you see Jesus? When he was dead, they put that stone in front of the cave, and they sealed it. You say, well, there, he wasn't thrown in the den of lions. Oh, yes, he was. Our adversary is the devil, war as well as a lion. That, that devil, he, if himself or his devils put, he put lions in that too. You make sure nobody comes in and takes that body. Pilate, you put a stone on that grave, you seal that grave. Don't you even dare make them think that they came here. See, 
devil didn't believe that Jesus was going to come out of that grave alive. The devil figured someone was going to come and steal that body. So the devil put lions in that tomb. You watch that grave. First day. How's it going in there? Oh man, he's in there. He is dead. Keep alert. Yes, Satan. Second day. How's it going in there? You know, this body's going to start reeking. And just keep your eye on it. Third day. How's it going? Man, he's dead. Why are you guys doing this? Shut up. Stay. Stay away. Alright. Come the first day of the week. How is he doing? Hello? Why is this door moved? Hello? What are you guys doing? Oh boy, devil, we in trouble. That body bone got up, folded the clothes, folded the napkin, kicked that rock away. And he said to us, I'll see you at the Great White Stone Judgment. See Daniel type of Jesus? They put a stone. And with the signet of the Lord, they sealed it with a seal. And what's that seal? The signet. Take an envelope. And you lick it and you close it. And you get that envelope to somebody. I think somebody opened this up. No, they couldn't because they, if they open it up, they ripped, torn. or Yeah, you're right. Okay. Nope, nope. That the purpose, the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. That's kind of funny because the king sealed it. That the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. What is the purpose? What could be changed? You know what that king was thinking? Look at verse 16. Thy God whom thou service continually, he will deliver thee. Daniel, you're not going to be eaten. And to prove it so, I'm going to seal this seal and this rock. You got to read Daniel 6 and, he, and a lot of questions. What did he labor? And the faith that he has in Daniel's God that, okay, what's the purpose? Might not be changed. Well, the purpose of the men were to have him killed. The purpose of the king is to have him delivered. And the purpose of Daniel is to serve the Lord. Quite interesting. That we'll close right there.